chapter 20, Exodus chapter 22 actually, Exodus chapter 22, I want to start while you're turning by saying that I am a preacher of the gospel, I pre- God called me to preach the gospel, uh, I normally do not get into any kind of political issues or normally do not get into uh, any kind of uh, uh, current events kind of things that's going on, but there's something here that I do want to give you I think it's very important that we need to be aware of, and uh, sometimes the best thing that you can do for somebody is give them a brief history lesson, and basically that's what this is going to be tonight. I'm going to give you some history tonight, and from the history that you received tonight, I don't want you to take my word on it. I'm going to give you names and dates I'm going to name countries, and I'm going to give you dates. Jot them down, and anybody who has Internet access or knows how to go to the library and ask them to look up uh, to get you online, you can check me out and make sure I'm telling you the truth because what I'm going to tell you tonight should be very shocking and eye-opening for some of you. It really, really probably will be. Uh, And we're going to be dealing with the Second Amendment. The Second Amendment, a uh, very uh, debated thing, and it's been debated for many years, but we've got the luxury of looking back on history where they didn't have as much luxury of history as we do. But I want to give you something. But here in Exodus chapter 22, verse 2, If a thief be found breaking up and be smitten that he die, there shall no blood be shed for him. You know what that verse is basically saying? That verse is saying if you wake up in the middle of the night, you hear a window busting and somebody's entered into your house, a thief has come to rob you blind and he's shot in your house, you're not guilty of murder. That's basically what that passage is saying. Uh, You have a God-given right to defend yourself, to defend your life. And men, you've got a, a f- men with a family, you've got a right to defend your family. That's right. Now, they may want to take that from us one day, but till they do, you still have that right. You still have that right. I want to give you something to think about tonight. I've got so much material, there's absolutely no way that I'm going to get to cover it all. Uh, I'm actually going to set some of it out already. But I want to, I want to give you some stuff to think about. December the 15th, 1791, December the 15th, 1791, the first 10 amendments to the Constitution of the Bill of Rights, the Bill of Rights, that's when they were ratified by the states, the notion that people would govern themselves, now watch this, the very notion that people would govern themselves was unprecedented. There was no models, there was no examples to follow for these men. For the first time, men acted into law, human rights. Not just governed rights, but human rights. The authors deemed these rights so important that they made provisions to protect these rights. And that provision was the Second Amendment. This is what it states, the Second Amendment. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Shall not be infringed. Very clear in its terminology. Very clear. Uh, Here's uh, here's what a lot of people, uh, uh, what the founding fathers thought about gun control. Benjamin Franklin said said this, those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little uh, temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. I give you something to think about. Thomas Jefferson, the law that forbids the carrying of arms are laws of such nature. They disarm only those who are neither inclined nor determined to commit crime. Now, are you with me? He is saying that the laws to disarm people isn't going to affect criminals. It's going to affect you and I, the ones that aren't determined to do evil. Such laws makes things worse for the assaulted and better for the assaultants. <laughs> they are, they, uh, let's see, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to skip through some of this stuff. 
They serve rather to encourage than to prevent homicide. Homicide. Why? Because if you know that they ain't carrying a gun, you're ten times more likely to jump them. The fear of what somebody has behind the door keeps a lot of crooks from busting in your door. Amen, amen, amen. Thomas Jefferson goes on to say, All power is inherent to, in the people, that they may exercise it by themselves. That is their right and duty to be armed at all times. Amen, amen, amen. George Mason, to disarm the people is the most effectual way to enslave them. That's right. That's you want right. to enslave a people? First step, take their guns. Noah Webster, before a standing army can rule, the people must be disarmed as they are in almost every country in Europe. Uh -huh. Oh. There's somebody from the past who had learned something from history. He had learned something from history and was looking around. He also goes on to say the supreme power in America cannot enforce unjust laws by the sword because the whole body of the people are armed and constitute a force superior to any band of regular troops. I give you something to think about, don't it? James Madison, Americans have the right and advantage of being armed, unlike people of other countries whose leaders are afraid to trust them with arms. I've got a quote in here that goes on to say that, that a government that fears its people will disarm them. Uh, there's many of these. I've just highlighted a few that I was wanting to read to you. Patrick Henry, guard with jealous attention the public liberty. Suspect anyone who approaches that jewel. Unfortunately, nothing will prevent it but downright force. Whenever you give up that force, you're ruined. The great object is that every man be armed. Everyone who is able might have a gun. He's saying fight for the freedom to maintain your guns uh, because it's the guns that give us that. Here, I'm going to give you another quote. Uh, another quote. One man with a gun can control... Can, I'm going to start over. One man with a gun can control 100 without a gun. Yes. You know who said that? Vandermeer... Lenin, the founder of the Russian Communist Party. Communists said that one, and it's true. See, they got some truths too, don't they? Don't sound as good, though, does it? Now listen to this. Political power grows out of the barrel of a gun. That's right. Another communist. Listen to this one. History teaches that all conquerors who have allowed their subjects races to carry arms prepared their own downfall. Who do you think said that? Hitler himself. Hitler said that one. Over and over, time and time again, history repeats itself. I make this statement all the time. A man that does not learn from history is doomed to repeat history, and that's a fact. When we fail to look back at history and see the way things have played out and the failures our forefathers made and the successes they had and learn from that, we're doomed to repeat their failures and, and most likely won't, won't repeat their successes. But listen, to ensure that the balance of power remains in the hands of the people, the framers of the Second Amendment crafted 27 words, one sentence, one sentence, and it's debated Highly, it's a big issue nearly every election anymore. The guns control. Uh, and this is the reason it was put in there. It was to protect our freedoms from. Here it is. I'll give you three things why it was put in there. Three things it was to do. It was to protect our freedoms from controlling political groups. It was to uh, protect our freedoms from oppressive religious organizations. You remember why we got started over here. And from the abusive government. And from an, ab an abusive government. In those 27 words, there's no mention of regulations, restrictions, licenses, or fees. There is no limitation to number or who can have and who can't have. It's clear. It simply says shall not be infringed. Here's four truths about the Second Amendment. I'm picking up speed because I'm, I want to get into the history part of this first and show you something. Here's some things, though, I think you ought to know about it because here's some of the arguments. The framers of the Second Amendment believed in God. 
Those who, who sat down and pinned those words down believed in God Almighty. They believed that God gave us the right to defend ourselves. And they made sure that we still had that right. And that means was that we could take up arms. They believed that they had a right to defend themselves. And it was a fundamental God-given right to each and every individual. Not only was it a right, but it was your duty to do so. The language of the Second Amendment prohibits the federal government from infringing on the rights of the people to bear arms. I'm going to give you an example, recent, fairly recent example of uh, someone's rights being infringed. Her name is Dr. Susan Hupp, H-U-P-P, look it up, H-U-P-P. Her family was shot and killed in Texas, in a Texas restaurant, October 16th, 1991. She went to eat with her mom and dad, and while she was in the restaurant, a man drove into the building, got out of his car, and opened fire on everyone in the restaurant. He began shooting them as they, as they, as they scattered and started ducking under tables and hiding. She came to the realization that her salvation was in her purse that she could not carry in the restaurant because it was against the law. Her gun, the means that she had to defend herself and her elderly parents, was in her pocketbook a hundred feet away in the car. The man continued to shoot. Twenty-three people died. Both her mama and her dad were shot. She said, the only thing gun control laws did that day was keep people like me from being able to protect myself and my family. That's what she said about the gun control laws. Texas state law prohibited the carrying of firearms, so her gun was not allowed in that restaurant. She could not carry it on her person in that restaurant. She could have saved her parents. She could have saved who knows how many other lives. She may not have had to have done it. If someone coming into a store knows that chances are half the people in there are armed, he's less likely to start shooting so randomly. Now, I'm going to give you a direct quote, and before you get mad at me and, and, and walk out of here and say the preacher used a cuss word, I want you to throw out your TV, you hypocrite. Okay? I'm going to give you a direct quote. This is what she said. Now, this is a lady who witnessed the murder of her parents when she could not when the laws prohibited her from having the ability to stop it. She had the means to stop what was taking place, but the laws kept her from being able to do so. Okay? She said, As odd as this may sound to you, and I've, I've seen it on video, I've looked at this and looked at it several times and looked at it today. This is a direct quote from her mouth. As odd as this may sound to you, I was not angry at the man, the madman, that did this, but I was mad as hell at my legislators because they had legislated me out of the right to protect myself and my family. That's right. She was angry, not at the madman, but at the government that passed the laws that kept her from being able to protect herself. That is a right that we should be fighting for. Then... You've got those that, that, that argue over the way it's worded. It says, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and to bear arms shall not be infringed. They say, okay, well, the wording says, well-regulated militia. Well, here's what they don't tell you. They don't tell you what that word well-regulated meant in that day. They give you today's definition of that word well-regulated. When you think well-regulated militia today, you think government-controlled, government laws, government censorship, government license, you, government's restrictions, all that. Nope, 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 nope. You go back to the day and the context, the time period in which that word was used, and that meant well-organized and well-prepared. Word, that word being used in other places in the same documents and similar documents define itself in its plane. Okay, but they want to argue that that gives the government the right to say which it is. They say that is your National Guard. That is not. That is not a militia. 
that's government. Yep. They're not going to fight against the ones paying their salary. They're going to take orders from those paying their salary, and that's the government. All right, now watch. When the government betrays the people by amassing too much power and becoming uh, uh, like tyrants, the people have no choice but to exercise their original rights of self-defense, even to fight the government. Alexander Hamilton, one of the framers. Yep. Yep. Now listen Amen. to this. The ultimate authority resides in the people. And that if the federal government got too powerful and overstepped its authority, then the people would develop plans of resistance and resort to arms. James Madison. That's right. I am not inciting resisting the government. I am saying we need to stand up and fight for our right to bear arms. Yes. I'm not one of those uh, 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 conspiracy theorists that goes off on the deep end over everything and we're not going to set up boot camp and we're not going to come and uh, have gun classes here and all this stuff. But I do want you to realize how important this is. I do want you to realize this. Some say, like I say, that that's the National Guard, but again, uh, it's not. Uh, I'm skipping, skip, skip. skip. Uh, one thing that you'll find back then uh, in that time period, anybody that knows history, knows history and studies much history will find out that it was their duty to own a musket, to own a gun. It was your duty. When you reached a certain age, it was your duty. The husband, the man of the house, it was his duty to own and be able to use and be not only willing to defend him, his own life, but the life of his family and he wasn't a man of much character if he, wouldn't, if he wouldn't help defend his community. That was what that was for. Do you know why America don't get under attack as much as it has? I really believe this with all my heart. Do you know what keeps the American from being invaded? Because they know that everybody over here owns guns. Nearly everybody over here has guns in their house. That would slow you down, I do believe. I do believe that would slow you down. Now, here's the question. Who wants to take your guns? Who would possibly want to take your guns? Who would want to take your guns? Now, I'm going to say something right here, and I'm going to name a name. And I'm naming the name because of the position, not because of the political party. I could care less if he was an a independent, a Republican, or a Democrat. That has nothing to do. It does not matter. I am exposing somebody for their stand on the gun control issues. And having said that, his name's Obama. Obama, over the years, has voted to enact laws, and this is what those laws will do. He, the, this is what he's voted to enact. Laws to ban all handguns. That's right. If it was up to him, you could not have a handgun. Right. In other words, you couldn't have, uh, well, let's look at what else he said. Uh, also, he voted to ban the sale or transfer of all semi-automatic firearms. Now, when I say that, no handguns, now don't panic, it was here the whole time and you just didn't know it and you wasn't afraid of it. All right? According to him, according to him, I couldn't own this gun because it's a handgun. Not only could I not own it because it's a handgun, because it's semi-automatic. And now watch this, he also wants to do away with the right to carry in every state nationwide. That's right. I wouldn't have been able to got it here tonight. Yep. Right, now you stop and think about that. I'm just, now I'm not trying to scare anybody. I'm just trying to give you a point. I'm trying to make a point. The firearms, now listen, he, is, he has voted over the years to enact laws that would ban firearms in the home even for self-protection. He only wants the military and police officers to own firearms. He thinks they're the only ones that have a need. Do you know what that's called when only the police officers and the military owns guns? That's called police state. You're no longer a free people when that takes place. In 2000, he sponsored a one gun a month law in Illinois when he was a senator there. He limited how many you could buy. You can only get one a month. Most states have a uh, most states have a uh, 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 
uh, I delay, I, I'm looking for a word here, it's just plumb left me. Most states have a, a time period that you have to wait, a waiting period. Okay, now a crook can get out of jail and he can have a gun within a four or five hours, but you've got to wait overnight, 24, 78 hours. You've got to go talk to the sheriff in this state, North Carolina, where we live. You've got to go sit down and personally show him ID, give him a chance to check your background, and tell him what purpose you want to have the gun, and then he chooses whether or not you can have it. I give you something to think about, don't it? Clinton was another one, and many other prominent political figures, and if you watch much TV, you'll find out that most of Hollywood and your news media want you to take, want, want those guns gone. Watch, every time there is some kind of critical or some kind of bad incident where someone takes a gun and uses it inappropriately, those who want to ban guns use it as a diving board to jump into the issue again saying, see, guns kill, we need stricter gun control laws. The truth of the matter is I've looked it up and I've spent much time, most of the day, looking up stuff on this. One percent, only less than one percent of all guns made will actually be involved in any kind of fatal action whatsoever. So when you try to put a blanket ban on guns and a blanket laws on guns, it is seriously searching for a needle in a, hay in a haystack. You're punishing everyone for the act of a few nuts, basically. This is what they'll tell you, though. I'm not going to spend much time on him. The only reason I mention his name is because he's the president of the United States, and, and uh, that's the only reason I even mention his name. It don't matter to me who he was. That's, that's the biggest voice that we have to worry with right now. Okay, they will tell you it is for your protection and that in order to live in a peaceable, polite society, we need to disarm the civilians. We need to control, regulate, and uh, uh, dis disarm society. Now, now, now listen, they claim that stricter gun control laws will reduce crime. That's a lie and can be proven very easily. Amen. You look in the states with the strictest gun control laws and you know what you'll find? You'll find the highest murder, highest rapes, you'll find more crime in those cities with the strictest gun control laws. Why? Because the citizens have lost the ability to defend themselves. When they take the right to defend yourself away from you, the crooks are emboldened. Yep. They will become brave and brazen, and they'll enter into your house and do whatever. Who gets hurt? Law-abiding citizens. Yep. Every law that's been passed in the form of gun control has, has affected law-abiding citizens. I, I cannot remember the names. I actually, Angie had I actually had, let, let her see this with me. It was a video talking about some gun control uh, laws and such. And there was a lady, a young family was at home. It was children. I think she was 14, 15 years old, something like that, and had some young sisters. Heard a noise. Went to investigate it. It was somebody breaking in the house. They'd been in the, in the shed, and they had pitchfork, and they'd come in. The, they'd used it to bust into the window and get in to gain access to the house. She run upstairs, got her sisters out of bed, and the man began stabbing her. The other sisters ran for the gun. They, run, they ran and they grabbed the gun, their mom and dad's gun, but it had a lock on it. She ran out and tried to fight the man off who was still stabbing her one sister. She ended up getting stabbed. Two of them escaped. Two of them were stabbed to death while the means of protection was in the house but because of the gun control laws stating that it had to be have a lock on it so the kids couldn't defend themselves. I got news for you. If you've got a gun and you keep it in your closet, if you've got a gun and you say it's for protecting your house, let me ask you a question, sir. You hear a noise in the middle of the night. Are you going to jump up, look out there, and investigate? You hear them coming in the house. They're coming in. They're not coming in to drink tea that time of night. I'll tell you that right now. They're not coming in to get your political views on any kind of issues of the day. They're coming in to do damage, harm, or steal, or kill, rape. They're coming in to do you wrong. Are you going to say, wait a minute, and then go to the closet, find the, find the box, get it down, find the key, unlock the box, 
Again, go find your ammo and put it in and say, now, let's go. You think he's going to stand there and wait on you? He's not. <laughs> you dug it. Amen, amen. Seriously. Now, this is what they'll say. This is what they'll say. They'll say this. They'll give you an illustration of some, they'll show you a picture of some kid that killed itself or shot a brother or shot a sister. And it'll rip your heart out. It is devastating and it is, ra- it is bad. It's a tragedy. But you know what they won't tell you? More kids are killed by alcoholic parents driving drunk every year than any kid is by picking up a gun. See, they use these stories to rip your heart out. They'll show you those pictures and they'll try to, try to make, you re- make you think that they're trying to help you. They are not. Those laws do not help you protect your family at all. I grew up in a house. We knew where the guns were, and we knew better than to touch them. In my house, my gun lays in the open. And the only reason it's here is because it's registered and they know about it. If you've got one, I don't want to know about it. If it ain't registered, even better. Don't tell anybody you got it. When you go buy ammo, pay cash. I'm being honest with you. I'm trying to help you. That This gives you something to think about. Now, uh, somebody put it this way. An armed society is a polite society. <laughs> you, you have the tendency to be a little politer when your life may depend on your next words. <laughs> and that's the truth. Your actions may, may really come back to haunt you. Now, mm, mm. I'm going to have to, man, I, I spent more time on that part than I, than I planned on. But let me go ahead and give you some history. I'm going to go through this pretty fast. It'll be on tape. If you've got any questions, I'll give it to you afterwards. You just write down the name of the place and the dates. And if you can catch the number, you catch the number. Be sure to pay attention to the numbers. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to look at history. And uh, remember what men have said. He who has the guns has the power. Remember what they say, disarmament does not bring peace. They'll tell you it does. I'm going to prove to you right here that when you disarm a society, it does not end in peaceful society. Okay? Governments which fear the people will disarm them. And watch what happens when the government disarms the people. In history, this can be proven in any court. Nobody can deny it. History facts are facts. Now, we're just going to lay out the facts, and you see what takes place. Here's a, way, here's a way to put a head into it. 170 million reasons. 170 million reasons to fight for the Second Amendment. And the reason I say 170 million, that's the number of civilians who have been slaughtered by their own government just in the 20th century just in the 20th century. Now, and of those numbers, of those who were killed, every one of them had something in common. They were defenseless because of gun control laws from their own governments. Turkey, 1915 to 1917. 1915 to 1917. Permits required to own a gun. Do you know why they do that? Because now they know who owns one. That's the first step in disarming a society is figure out who has guns. Who has them? So make a permits and licenses to own them. Permits give the government the list of the owners. Once the permits were required, followed by a ban on handguns. Followed by a ban on any kind of arms. You know what? Once that was followed, once that took place... Uh, laws began to be passed to report those who still had guns. And it was so bad in Turkey that people were begging and buying guns just so they could have something to turn in because they was afraid of the torture that followed if they were accused of having a gun and didn't have one to turn over when the authorities come to get it. So they were seeking and hunting for guns just so they could give them. Okay? Now, there was in Turkey... 1.5 million Armenians, mostly Christian, killed 
after their guns was taken from them. That's men, women, and children. And here's what the news media won't tell you. Muslim religion. That was the peaceful religion doing that to Christians. Okay, that was Turkey, 1915, 1917. Don't believe me. Please don't believe me. Go look it up. Soviet Union, 19. Soviet Union, 1920, 1945. Soviet Union, 1920, 1945. First thing they required was license of owners. You got If you have a gun, you've got to license. Then they, then it followed, uh, follows up, of course, with a ban on possession, followed by severe penalties to, for those who were caught with guns in possession after the laws was passed. In 1929, they took the farmer's land. Millions were forced into labor camps and the people could not fight back. What good's a pitchfork against a gun? You, you, you come at me with a pitchfork, look at the distance between the pulpit and where you are. Before you got to me, I could done put 15 rounds in you. You ain't gonna do too much to me with a pitchfork and I've got a gun. They could not defend themselves. In 1932, Stalin, Stalin, the communist, he cut off the food and the travel in the country. Why? He could put the undesirables in this section. He could force them to work. Then he starved them. They were producing food. He was selling it overseas. The world seen them as a prosperous state. And their people were starving to death and turning to cannibalism because they could not defend themselves. Over 10 million killed by their own government by their own government. Nazi Germany, 1933, 1945. Now we're getting down there where some of y'all was probably alive during this time. You might have been little babies, but you, you, you're coming on the scene now, okay? Uh, first thing that Germany did, required registration and licenses. Then they started getting stricter with the hand control laws to an outright ban on possession. 20 million. I'm not going to spend much time because there's so much stuff on, the, on, on Germany. It's easy to get. Estimates have been millions of millions. A safe estimate, 20 million. 20 million. Jews, gypsies, and critics killed. Here's one. Here's one. Uh, China, 1937, 1976. Ban on guns. Couldn't even have them for hunting. They were forced to join the army. A lot of them were forced to join the army to help enforce those laws. And before it was over with, 35 million, 35 million civilians from rural populations declared enemies of the state and killed. This is history. This is history you can look up and find. They don't teach it to our children in school. This is called genocide. This is when they purposely and deliberately kill their own people. This is, I've already given you one, two, three, four. I ain't done yet. Germany, again, 1933, 1945. Hitler used gun control registration laws to confiscate guns. How did he do it? Those gun control laws let him know who had them. Once he found out who had them, that's the first step. Then it's just a matter of taking them from them. He set up national ID cards to control their travel. Now he's got full control of them because now they have no way to protect themselves and he can control where they go. He can control their travel. Then come in the concentration camps again, tens of millions killed. Guatemala, 1960 to 1981. Registration laws, license and high fees, prohibited to carry guns to an outright ban on guns. Then they took it a step further. They banned anybody from having any kind of sharp tools. They granted the government uh, powers to confiscate any kind of weapon, that they th anything that they deemed to be uh, a weapon. 100 to 200,000 Mayans and Indians were called political enemies and were killed. Guatemala, that was 1960 to 1981. Uganda, Uganda, 
1971 to 1979, registered all guns and owners. First step, make them all register their guns, who owns them and why, and all that. The license for transactions, keep up with the sales of them. Now you're starting to get a little bit closer to home now. We, we've already got some of these laws in place. We've already got some of the laws in place. I'm showing you a pattern. Do you see a pattern yet? Okay. Uh, warrant. Oh, here we go. Uganda, 1971 to 79. Listen to it again. Register all guns and owners. License for transactions. Un. Now watch this. Warrantless searches was granted. They had the ability to go in and search for a gun in any home at any time without a warrant. In other words, if they suspect you had a gun, immediately they could go into your house. They didn't have to uh, stop and wait on the courts. They didn't have to get any kind of any kind of permission. They could search any time and had the powers to confiscate it. 300,000 Christians were called political enemies and killed. Atman, Amen, I can't pronounce his name correctly, he had 16. He was the leader at the time. He had... 16,000 killed just because he questioned their loyalty. All Asians were exiled during that time. Amen. 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 That's the guy. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't say it right, but that was Amen. Cambodia. Listen to this one. Cambodia. Now you've got to get a hold of this one. Cambodia, 1975-1979. License for owners. You had to have license to own guns and license to purchase ammunition, followed by photo ID with fingerprints. They want a little more information. License inspected quarterly. Every, every three months they was inspecting your license. After a five-year civil war, all religious leaders and, quote, undesirables, all who were educated, were killed. His name was Rogue, R-O-U-G-E. He controlled and and was uh, and he he gave them the he gave them the power to do that. And then there was a guy by the Pol Pot came came onto the scene. And when he took power, he seen to it that all the people were disarmed. And in four years, now listen to me, four years time. In Cambodia, two million people were killed. They were called enemies of the state. You were in danger of being killed for wearing glasses because you looked educated. Because you looked educated, they would kill you. Deem you enemy of the state and kill you. Please don't believe me. Look it up. Look it up. Rwanda, 1994. 1994. Registered guns. Now, they, now, these laws were in place, and this is building up to the years that I'm giving you. Registered guns, you had to register as an owner. You had to register your ammunition when you purchased it. Owners must justify the need. Concealable guns, illegal. No way that you could have a gun this size because you could conceal it. So small firearms were totally illegal. They gave themselves, they gave the police and the, uh, the military uh, confiscation powers. They could go in, search your home, and take it anytime they deemed necessary. 800,000 killed. Now listen, in 100 days. In 100 days, when the law passed to confiscate their guns and their arms, they gave the military and the government the power to go in and confiscate them. And when the people refused, they were ordered to shoot to kill. 800,000 people died in 100 days. Rwanda, 1994. Look it up. Then go to Bangladesh, 1971. 1 1.5 million. Sudan, Zimbabwe, Bosnia. The numbers are staggering. You know why we're free in America? Because we're armed. Because we're armed. Do you know what they have to do to us before they can take our liberties and our freedoms? They've got to take the ability to defend ourselves. That's right. Once they strip us, of, strip us of the ability to defend ourselves, 
we are subject to them, whatever they will. That's why I think it was important that we did do something on this and bring to your attention. Yeah. All the pretty double talk, two-faced, slick willy talk that's coming out of Washington and coming across Hollywood, through Hollywood and through the television news media, all they're doing is trying to give you some pretty sad story and at the same time steal your right to defend yourself and your family. Do not be that gullible. Do not be that fooled. Yes, it's a sad thing when a child gets its hands on a gun and it's not been taught properly to fear and respect that gun and there's an accident. Yes, it's a sad day when a teenager haven't, hasn't got enough sense than to go and, and, and get into a gun and shoot his family. It, it's like this. They say guns kill, gun kill. Guns do not kill. You can give a man a gun and he can do one or two things. He can protect his family and his freedoms and his right. He can protect his family with that gun. Or he can turn around and blow their head off. It's up to the individual man. It's not the gun. It's not the gun. The gun is the means in which we do things. You take somebody disturbed enough to shoot somebody, he's disturbed enough to take a kitchen knife and cut him up to pieces. Shoot me, don't stab me. <laughs> I'd much rather be shot than stabbed, I believe. <laughs> but anyway, uh, here's some myths. Guns kill. We've done talked about that. No, they don't. Guns don't kill. It's the nut behind the gun that does the killing. Uh, here's another myth. Gun control laws will lower crime. Right the opposite. This is what they say. Less guns, less crime. No, that's a lie. Less guns, more crime. The more guns, the less the crime. Why? Because you would be less likely to try to break in my house and harm my wife and my children or myself if you thought I had a gun in there. That's right. Because you knew once you come through there that I was going to send you back out with lead. Okay? Now you say, what can I do? What can I do to defend these rights? First of all, be honest with yourself. First of all, what you need to do is get informed a little bit. You can go online, you can go to the National uh, uh, Rifles Association, they've got plenty of information on this subject. You can look at that and you can see the laws that they're passing now that's trying to take your right to bear arms, try to take your right to do. You can go and check them out and they'll give you that information free. You can find it there on the internet. Then find out what the candidates are saying that we're putting in power that, that has the ability to bring to pass the laws to, to stop this thing. Who are you voting for? What are they saying about this stuff? That's what you need to pay attention to. Americans have messed up so badly, we've quit looking at the issues and started looking at our stinking pocketbook. When we started voting our pocketbook, our morals and our freedoms were gone. Mm. Well, I know it. I ain't even going to get into the parties. I'm just trying to, get, trying, to get it, trying to get it just dead straight. Here's another thing that you can do. Uh, 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 like I said, if you've got a gun and it's registered, the only reason this gun's here right now is because they know I've got it. And as far as you're concerned, that's the only gun I got. But I will say this, if you can get your hands on a gun and pay cash for it without paperwork, do it. Buy ammunition, pay cash for it. And be wise. Don't go around and tell everybody you got it. Because when it comes to pass that they may, it may, I, God forbid, I hope it never does. But if it comes to pass that they pass the laws taking our guns and rights to bear arms in this country and they come to get your arms, what makes you think they won't ask your neighbors if you've got them and your friends? And your buddy just might be mad at you at that time and say, oh, so-and-so's got one. Or you're bragging at work about it or everything. Listen, there's nothing wrong with... Not telling everybody all your business. And again, one of the most important things you can do is pay cash. No paper trail. I mean cash. No plastic. Ain't nothing. I'll be honest with you. I'm old fashioned. I hate getting in the store and standing there. Why don't you just give them a 20 and be done with it and stand there 10 minutes waiting on that thing to go through? We'll try it again. We'll try it again. Something wrong with the machine. I'm sorry. Yeah. All these time-saving conveniences, there's a reason behind them. There's a reason behind them. All right. Any questions?